Modern Ham Radio is digital. In this video I will show you the architecture of a modern network consisting of the state-of-the-art technology used by ham radio operators. It should act as a teaser and an overview of our possibilities. All network parts are wireless, independent of the internet and primarily TCP IP based. A goal should be to make them also independent of the power grid. The backbone is extremely high speed compared with all the technologies like packet radio. It can include satellite communication as well as smaller devices like DMR radios and even LoRa boards. Parts of this network can be used standalone for your projects and most of the technologies shown are available and used right now. Just not integrated into one network. This is what we try to build here in Switzerland. Hello wireless enthusiasts. Here is the channel with the strange Swiss distortion in the signal with a new video around wireless and other exciting stuff. Make sure you subscribe if you do not want to miss the following emissions. In addition to giving an overview of technologies, it is an indicator of future videos on this channel. In addition, it should be the foundation for an integration project for documenting and improving currently available technology towards interoperability in one network. Let's start with the architecture. The network consists of a backbone based on permanently installed fast TCP IP links. Typically, these links go from hilltop to hilltop and are based on Hamnet. Its capacity is many megabits per second. We use commercially available 5.8 GHz Wi-Fi devices like this one to get high speed. Such devices have become affordable and our channels are much less crowded because as ham radio operators we can use frequencies outside the general available ISM band. We also are allowed to use higher powered devices. So such links can go up to 70 km and more. We could also use 2.4 and 3.3 GHz links. On 2.4 GHz, channels are often noisy because we share most of them with the general public. 3.3 GHz is no longer allowed in some countries and the equipment is costly because it is not built in big series. So for new networks, 5.8 GHz is the right band. Next, we must organize access to these hilltop stations from the valleys and towns. Here we can use several technologies. The fastest is Aridin. It uses the same 5.8 GHz technology and the same devices as Hamnet. So frequencies have to be coordinated between the two networks. But why do we need another technology for the last mile? Hamnet is a standard TCP IP network with pre-allocated addresses and routes. Changes have to be implemented by network managers. Ariden is a mesh network that automatically does the network management. If you start a new node, it automatically connects to all other nodes and also can be reached by all. And every node automatically relays messages from and to other nodes. Excellent for experimenting, or for emergency comms, where speed and flexibility are essential. This flexibility is paid for by less performance, mainly if more than 40 or 50 nodes participate in the same network. The reason is that all nodes occupy the same channel and the network needs additional management traffic. Examples of big RDN networks exist in California. And in Germany, for example, they deploy pop-up networks for disasters or emergency exercises. It is also possible to connect hilltops with Ariden if you use different frequencies for those links. Like Hamnet nodes, Ariden nodes provide RJ45 connectors for laptops, voice over IP telephones or IP cameras, and Wi-Fi access for smartphones. So this high performance network can be used by standard consumer devices. 5.8 GHz technology strictly needs a line of sight between nodes. What happens if we do not have a line of sight or want to use mobile stations? Then we have to use other technologies with lower frequencies and also with lower speeds. 
The second TCP IP based technology is NPR70. Because it runs on 70 centimeters, it enables connections not possible on 5.8 GHz. But keep in mind, if you do not use directive antennas, it is pretty power hungry. All other technologies are not based on TCP IP and support only one application or use case, like mail, voice, chat, short messaging or sensor data. I start with the Winlink mail system. It can be used on VHF and UHF if we need higher speeds. Or on HF if we need longer distances or have no line of sight. Winlink servers usually are placed close to Hamnet or exposed Ariden nodes. Like that they are reachable from a wide area and are connected to the high throughput backbone. Winlink servers also can be connected to HF radios to get ranges of a few hundred or even a few thousand kilometers. But because of low bandwidth, their transfer capacity is low. VARA, a proprietary software, is the preferred transmission protocol for these Winlink sessions, because it achieves the highest throughput per bandwidth. The next use case is voice. Here we have several possibilities. Either we use voice over IP telephony, usually connected to Arden nodes. Here we can use standard telephones. You get them cheap or free of charge because they are no more needed in modern offices. Or we use voice over IP clients on smartphones. Often these telephones use a PBX and a telephone book published on the network. Another possibility is to use DMR, which works on the 70 cm band and uses handheld or mobile radios. Conventional long-range DMR relays are placed on hilltops and can be connected to Hamnet. Ad hoc networks can be created by Pi Star hotspots connected to Ariden nodes. These are Raspberry Pis with an RF hat. The range of course is only short. The next use case is chat or short message service. For that purpose, all Ariden nodes offer mesh chat. There are other such applications available like Mattermost or TeamTalk. These can be offered as a service and run on one or more Raspberry Pis, usually connected to the backbone for better performance. We also can connect APRS messaging service used by many handheld telephones. Or maybe we use the new LoRa mesh networks like Meshtastic or Meshcom to transfer messages to and from smartphones. They are already integrated into email and APRS. This is the video to watch if you are interested in Meshcom and this one if you are interested in Meshtastic. Because the LoRa nodes are very low power, they can be used as battery operated sensors or location trackers. We can attach a simple Raspberry Pi to the IP based nodes and offer services like wikis or information kiosks to distribute information. Here your imagination is the limit. As said before, our network must also run during power outages. So we could include Starlink or other satellite based station in the network. We only need a few because all network participants can use them. So far, I do not know if this is already done. And at least if you live in the footprint of the Q0100, we could use this marvelous satellite to bridge long distances. Windlink sessions are already tried out. Maybe somebody can create a high speed link for the broadband transverter, or maybe it already exists. You see, we already have many opportunities for projects. If you live in an area like San Francisco, you just mount a Wi-Fi antenna flashed with Ariden on your roof and point it to the next hill with an access point. If you own an HF rig used for FT8, you can try Winlink HF. In all other situations, the best entry point is to buy this Mikrotik router for $60. Flash it with Ariden software and ask for a tunnel to a nearby Ariden network. Then you are connected and you can start to build your own network or create services for others. Or you ask for VPN access to Hamnet. Be aware that these tunnels and VPN connections still use standard internet and are not optimal for disasters. But they already create a lot of fun to play with and learn. And you get into contact with all these enthusiastic people in the community.
Another possibility could be to build your own DMR network around your house or for your club during a meeting. Or, as in our club, create LoRa mesh networks or build LoRa APRS trackers and deploy LoRa eye gates close to your repeaters. Both are perfect projects for a Saturday club meeting. Or, if you are a programmer, you could help to create a new project called dhamstack.com. This should become a repository for Raspberry-based services useful for the digital ham. It will be Docker-based and, like IoT Stack, its deployment will be simple also for a Raspberry newbie. The ham stack will offer a choice of services in this field. All ticked software packets are then automatically installed. Like that you will get a running Raspberry Pi with all services for your network in under one hour. Volunteers find my email address on qrc.com. That's all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. 73 to everybody, and please consider supporting the channel by using the links in the description. See you in the next episode.